Hey guys, it's Shaylin and I'm here today with another episode of Recent Reads. It's been a little while since I did one of these because I filmed this a while ago and the footage disappeared. I don't really understand what happened. So this is a little late. These are books I read in kind of like halfway through May half to halfway through June. I was reading a lot throughout the summer because I've been on a quest to get my TBR to zero book. So let's just jump into this. This is one of the best collections of books I've ever read of the 10 here. There aren't really any that I disliked. It's just a really, really good set of books. And you have a similar reading taste to me. I hope you guys will find something you're interested in in this one because really there were a lot of exceptional books that I read this time around. So the first book that I read was After Dark by Haruki Murakami. This is my second Murakami. My first was Norwegian Wood that I read earlier this year. I read this in just one sitting on a plane. This follows this young woman named Mari and she's in a Denny's in Tokyo at I don't know what time, like 11 p.m. maybe, and she's approached by someone that she has met before and is kind of catapulted into this weird journey through Tokyo one night, and the whole book takes place during one night. So we also follow um, her sister who has been in this long sleep for like three months. So I did enjoy this. Reading it did make me, I think, realize that I didn't enjoy Norwegian Wood as much as I said I did when I talked about it. I liked this more than Norwegian Wood and I wouldn't give this more than a three star rating. So I liked this more than Norwegian Wood even though initially I rated Norwegian Wood higher. I lowered my Norwegian Wood rating after reading this. Anyways, doesn't matter. <laughs> I did enjoy this book. I thought it was interesting. I thought the characters were interesting. I know Murakami is not known for writing women well but I thought that Mari was an interesting character. She just had a bit of a like, it wasn't even her, it was like the narrator was kind of the third person narrator kind of saw her in a like not like other girls kind of complex a little bit but other than that I thought she was quite interesting. I really liked the atmosphere of it and the tone of it. Right as the story was getting started it ended and I know that we're dealing with a very short time frame. The main event that happened I thought was going to be like the inciting incident and it was going to launch her into something and then it kind of just like that was the story. So it kind of just felt too thin to me. Like it felt like, I know it was a very limited time frame that we were dealing with, but I just feel like so much more could have happened. I just left feeling a tiny bit unsatisfied. Everything was there that was solid, like this really engaging atmosphere and like the way the city was portrayed and the weird surrealism with her sister. I had so many questions, I was really propelled by that. And it just felt like the book ended right as it was starting. Like, we never really got enough of a story. Does that make sense? <laughs> so immediately after After Dark, and by immediately I mean on the same plane ride, I read Convenience Store Woman by Sayako Murata. This is a novel about this woman named Kiko. It's also set in Tokyo, which that wasn't intentional, but I did read two books back to back set in Tokyo on the same plane. This is a novel about this woman named Kiko and she works in a convenience store and she's been working in this convenience store for 18 years. And she's always been kind of an offbeat person. Before the convenience store, nothing really fit with her. She felt like she almost didn't really fit into society. And then she found the convenience store and it like, it was, it was like finding her purpose in life. However, now that she's been working there for so long, she feels like people around her are expecting her to move on and get a real job and to get married and start a family. So she kind of is wrestling with the fact that she's very content with her life, but society isn't really accepting that. She feels a lot of external pressure. I felt very similar to this how I felt about After Dark. I thought Kiko was a really interesting character and I also just really thought that her character arc was very different from what you normally see. There was a point in the middle where I thought her character arc was going to go a certain way and I was kind of feeling like a little disappointed because it was very familiar and it kind of ruined what part of what was so interesting about her. And then the way that this book ended, it's not a route that authors usually go with a character and I really liked it. So I did really enjoy this and for how short it is, I think it does what it wants to do. But I just felt like it was a little too thin, you know? Like it could have gone a lot deeper into the story. However, I did really enjoy this, especially just because for a very character driven novel, the main character is very just delightful and odd and um, quirky, but not in a like, overly quirky way like she's very kind of realistically quirky and weird just a really interesting character next is the third novel that i started on that plane but did not finish um and that was everything under by daisy johnson this is a novel about this woman named greta and it's very non-linear but it tells the story of her reconnecting with her mother 
um, as well as looking into her childhood and kind of the eerie mysteriousness that was lurking in the canals around Oxford where she grew up. This was so like up my alley. Um, it's very like dark and atmospheric and weird. What stands out to me the most about this is the atmosphere. Eerie, creepy, folkloric, surreal, dark, marshy. Like it's just the prose is so beautiful and it is combined with this really thick atmosphere which atmosphere is one of my favorite qualities in a piece. Like if I read something with a really strong atmosphere that's like top-notch to me. I really enjoyed pretty much everything about this, like tone, prose, very interesting story, really interesting characters, interesting relationships, just really interesting. The only thing is the structure is very much based on how we remember. This book is really exploring memory and because it's very much based on how we remember, which is often very fragmented, it can be, in my opinion, I lost track of where I was quite often. Partly I think the disorienting feel is adds to the book. But sometimes I truly did lose track of where I was on the timeline because the timeline's very bouncy. It's a little disorienting, but part of that I feel like is just that it's a disorienting narrative and like that's part of that is intentional. So I did really enjoy this because really everything about it is quite wonderful and immersive. Lost track of where I was quite easily. Just talking about it right now, like I want to be back in it, you know? Then I read a short story collection, Mouthful of Birds by Samantha Schweblin. This collection actually, I think, has a very similar tone to Everything Under. Like, it's spooky and eerie and immersive, and I really, really enjoyed this. So this is a collection of fairly short stories, like, there's about 20 of them in here, but they're all centered around kind of the weird, you know, people who are kind of, like, on the outskirts of reality or society. A lot of them are quite dark, a lot of them have, like, kind of a horror edge. A lot of the stories here, I think, are just so successfully disturbing and unsettling in a way that I really, really liked. They're very sharp, they really pack a punch. I really enjoyed a lot of these. Like, there were a few stories that didn't land with me because there are so many. It's hard to get, like, 20 stories to land, but there were a lot of highlights in here and a lot that I keep thinking of and I'm just like, whoa, like, that was a story. <laughs> Personally, I thought, oh, I hope they are okay. I thought the ones that veered more into horror were like the most successful. Um, I really like Samantha Schweblin's novella Fever Dream, which had a similar effect. So at this point, I'm just like a huge fan of Samantha Schweblin. Everything she writes at this point, I'm like, that's, that's it right there. So then I read The Immortalists by Chloe Benjamin. This is a novel about these four siblings and in their youth they speak to the psychic who tells them the dates of their death. From then on we follow each of the siblings in a different section of the book um, and kind of how this knowledge goes on to impact their lives. It's a great premise. Um, I really enjoyed the writing style and everything. For me this was kind of just like average I guess. Like the premise is great. There are some really interesting ideas and moments. I didn't really connect to all of the characters I feel in the way I think I was supposed to or wanting to. Like, of the four siblings, I thought that Simon, who's the first one that we follow, is the one that I, I really felt him as a character, like, emotionally. But the other three characters I just didn't connect to, and I didn't feel like they were too developed. Like, Clara, she's the second character we follow, and the concept of her character. She's like a magician. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on, but yet I never felt her enough, really. So maybe that was me. I don't know. Maybe it was the writing. I don't know. Other than Simon, the, the three others just felt a little distant, a little sterile to me. But the novel still has a lot going for it. So then I read On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong, which was definitely one of, if not the most, or my most anticipated read of this year. I was so looking forward to this. I am a huge fan of Ocean Vuong's poetry, so the fact that he was writing a novel was like the best news of my life. I guess I would say it's like a very personal novel in that there's not much of a plot or storyline. It's basically the protagonist kind of writing a letter to his mother. Awareness that his mother, who's quite elderly, is never really going to read it, but he's it's kind of just like his way of telling his whole story. The story is all in very little short vignette. Deeper in the novel it becomes almost like structurally like a poem. I don't know, I feel like knowing that Ocean Vuong is a poet, there were points in like the third part of the book where I was like, this is like a novel poem. I love this just as much as I was hoping and expecting to. I think the thing that stands out about this is just that it's written with like so much heart. 
for the characters. For the most part, the book is kind of exploring his experience growing up as an immigrant, his relationships with his family, his family's relationship with Vietnam and the Vietnam War, him exploring his sexuality as a teenager, and so it's quite non-linear but you kind of just get this like patchwork of his life and him and all of the characters are just written with like a lot of tenderness where like you like they just feel very real and you know when you read a book and you're just like this feels like a very important book like this needed to be here in the world this felt like a very important book i think not just because of the subject matter alone i think just because the way the characters are written. So then I read a short story collection, Florida by Lauren Groff. Lauren Groff is one of my favorite writers. I love Lauren Groff. It's not a secret that I love Lauren Groff. I want her to adopt me. She is my mother. More than like any other short fiction writer, Lauren Groff can give you a very deep scope on a character's life in a very short period of time. Like you feel like after you read a Lauren Groff story, I feel like I just read a whole novel with that character. There were a couple in here that didn't do much for me, but there are a lot of stories in here that are like some of my favorite short stories of all time. Dogs Go Wolf especially, I adored that story. The Midnight Zone, um, what are the others I really liked? Why Port, I Wall, and Above and Below. Those are all ones that like really stand out to me as just highlights, which is like half or most of the book, I <laughs> think. Then I read some poems. Soft Science by Franny Choi. I read her chapbook, Death by Sex Machine, a couple months ago, which this is like an expansion of, and basically this book and the chapbook both kind of, like they look at a lot of very human emotions, things like loneliness and isolation and, but this is all shown through like cyborgs and robots. There's like a series of poems in here called the Turing Test Poems. Um, each of the sections I think opens with them. Um, and they're excellent. I, I will leave a link to one of them in the description if I can find them. I think one is posted online. They're just such excellent poems as a whole series. All of them are excellent. It's it's basically like a transcript of a um, conversation with a cyborg. Franny Choi just uses such electric, interesting language. And also, I just think conceptually, this is such an interesting book of poems. What I thought was really interesting was just like the feeling of loneliness that's like really pervasive throughout this. I don't know, there's just this feeling of like confusion over who you are and like where you are and loneliness and isolation that like you feel very strongly even though like the narrator is a robot. It's so brilliant. Like this is just brilliant. So the next book that I read was Son of a Trickster by Eden Robinson. This is a novel that I think just completely defies categorization, but follow this teenager named Jared. This is very much like a coming of age novel um, and kind of just like his relationship with his parents. His mother especially is like a very prominent character and that's a very well drawn relationship. Um, but there also just is like the splash of fantastical elements as these kind of bizarre things start happening and he starts to think that maybe his grandmother's warnings that he is the son of a trickster might be true and what this might mean for him. This is a really interesting novel. I've read some of Eden Robinson's short stories before in classes. I thought that the characters here were just excellent. There's just real like humanity to how they're written and the relationships especially are so good. The relationship between Jared and his mother is one of the most well-drawn parent-child relationships I have ever read. Um, I think Eden Robinson understands like young millennials or like Gen Zers better than I do and like I'm 22. <laughs> She gets it. Like this book is the only, I think the only book I've ever read that had texting that actually felt like how people text. And it's not like they spoke, they texted with the same like voice that I texted, but it just felt accurate and non-cringy, which very rarely is the case. Jared is a really strong lead. Like he's a very just lovable character. He's a very like empathetic kid with like a good head on his shoulders. You really want to root for him, but his mistakes and his flaws are still very like, well drawn and everything. Just really great character writing in here. My only issue is that I think like I spent most of the book waiting for the book to start I kind of felt like. So like there are fantastical elements in here and we get like the whispering of that near the beginning. Things like you know like ravens start to talk to him and like weird stuff is happening and you're like waiting like you're like this is gonna be good. <laughs> Almost the entire book is really just focused around kind of his interpersonal relationships, which are still interesting, but it takes so long to get any payoff 
for the fantastical elements. And once we got there, it was excellent. Like the last fifth of this book is so interesting when we get all of this folklore. Like it just, I felt like I was waiting for an inciting incident the whole time. I think this is also like a really interesting book to discuss in terms of category. Just this is nothing really to do with the book itself. Well, it does. But I feel like this book just kind of defies categorization. Is it YA or is it adult? Like, is it fantasy or is it magical realism or is it contemporary or is it like, what is it? I don't know, but it doesn't really matter. Like, it doesn't really need to be any of those things. Like, it's kind of everything at once and it's kind of cool. I don't know. I like that. Like, I felt like it just wasn't really too constrained by genre, you know? Um, I've seen it shelved as YA, but to be honest, it's like some of the content in here is just more than I'd expect from YA. Anyways, this is also getting turned into a TV series, which I am really excited about because I think it's gonna make a great TV series. So the final book that I read was Girls Burn Brighter by Shoba Rao. So this is a novel that hurt me. This book follows these two girls, Savitha and Purnima. They live in a small village in India and their friendship is just... <sighs> Look, I'm a sucker for power friendship stories. Like that's my weakness is power friendship stories. This is a real... <laughs> This is a real one. And basically they end up getting separated and so most of the novel is them trying to find their way back to each other. Um, and you, you really get the feeling that they're like soulmates. I was immediately entranced by this because of the characters. By page 20, I was fully ready to die for both of them. Um, like it's been a long time. Like I've, I've mentioned really great characterization in a lot of these books, but this was like, I don't know, something else. Like, it's been a long time since I have felt that much for characters. And the plot is quite distressing. Um, there's a lot of very distressing content, I would say. Honestly, I couldn't stop reading because it's like I couldn't stop reading until they were reunited. Like, I, <laughs> I didn't, I wasn't okay. Like, I could not put down this book while they weren't okay. Like, I couldn't just settle with that. Like, <laughs> that was not all right with me. It's a very harrowing journey that we follow both characters on. The writing is beautiful. It's just, it's a very powerful story. There's a lot of like um, sexualized violence in this book. It didn't feel gratuitous, but it is quite a lot. Um, so I would give a quite a fair warning for that. But yeah, definitely a very like harrowing plot line. So like I'd be quite ready for that, but very beautifully written with very like empathetically written characters who just really like like they had my whole heart. So those are the last 10 books that I've read. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've read anything great recently, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can always send me an ask on Tumblr and I'll see you next time.